Hello, my name is Richie and today we have the long-awaited trigger transmitter tutorial. Um, I'm sorry that it took a little bit longer, but you know, Fortnite added a couple new things to them and I uh, had to, you know, adjust a couple things. Um, but yeah, we're here. And this video I will go over the basic stuff, I will go over some, uh, you know, more advanced stuff, some things that you can build with it, and i also show you some actually builds that you can make with it, like a uh, 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 randomizer over here, or um, the combination lock. And I also show you how you can make the type frenzy map. And uh, yeah, with that being said, let's go right into it. So the first thing that we want to look at is obviously what can triggers do. Uh, triggers are most likely not something that you call them because most likely you want to call them transmitters because trigger is actually just a type of device. So you can see you have the device gallery and you have a lot of these, um, if they would load up, you have a lot of devices which can actually uh, function as a trigger or transmitter. So the trigger is obviously just one device. So you have the button, for example, I'll come to that later. That is also a trigger in that kind. So basically all they do is they transmit a signal to something uh, in the map, which you obviously connected them to. And then you have some cool stuff happening. Uh, obviously, if we don't step on a trigger, you can see that you have a reaction coming out of that. And that is basically how triggers and receivers work together. Okay, now that we know what triggers can do and what cool stuff you can make with it, um, we should go over what you can use as a trigger and what you can use as a receiver. And uh, as we already mentioned, there's a huge list which which you can use as triggers and receivers. You can mainly use just things from the device category. Uh, you can also use things from uh, the galleries category, which is the uh, particles, which are these kind of beautiful things. And you can use the beacons as receivers as well, but we go over it later. So let's go over the things that you can use as a trigger. And um, the first one is the trigger itself. Uh, this one is your all-rounder. You can basically activate it by walking over it. You can activate it by jumping on it. You can activate it by shooting at it, pickaxing it. You can you know, use that thing for basically everything. Uh, you can also activate it by uh, triggering it by some other trigger, which is like, this thing is your all-rounder and you want to use it most likely for everything. Um, the next one is the button, which is a new one. Uh, this is the only one currently which can be interacted with a key. So that's pretty cool for maps where you have to press a button or something. Uh, we have the um, the collectibles, which you can also use as a trans uh, transmitter. You have the objectives, you have uh, uh, bumpers, and you can even use the uh, sentry and the checkpoint uh, as a transmitter. Because if you eliminate the, uh, the sentry, you can send a signal and also if you uh, activate it for the first time, you can uh, send a signal with the checkpoint. Uh, new things which got just added to the 10.0 version are the explosive device, which was just before was a receiver because you could not transmit anything, but now you can use it to actually transmit a signal if it explodes, which is very cool because you can time it up and you can have timing on it. And it's, it's a pretty cool, unique uh, thing. Uh, that you can use and also the timer which is basically the best thing that ever happened to uh to the creative community because that thing is actually super cool you can have exact timings of uh, when you want to start something uh, you can create score systems that it was not able to create before and this thing is basically awesome okay the last thing on the list is um a semi trigger because this thing can be used as a trigger but it cannot transmit anything uh, so it always needs a second transmitter or a second trigger to do anything. For example, uh, we will see that later. Um, you could place um, a trigger here and then activate it, you know, with a trigger. Can be useful for a lot of cases. I will show you that later. Okay, let's go over the receivers. And the receiver is basically the thing that is the in the end or in the middle of uh, your connections. Uh, most likely like a quarterback, you know, a quarterback always needs a receiver. He can throw the ball all day long, but if there's nobody to catch it, then uh, there's no need to throw it, right? So um, basically you can use every uh, trigger as a, tr a receiver. So that's obviously, that is you know, common sense. Uh, you can, you know, make like chains with it and all that kind of stuff. Uh, things I already mentioned is that you can use the uh, beacon gallery and the particle gallery as a receiver as well. So you can, you know, turn them on and off. Things you also can use is uh, from the vent gallery, I, I think it's called, uh, the air vent. You can turn that thing also on and off, which is pretty cool. It's also kind of new thing. 
things that you can also do is you can you know remove text and make text show up that is um helpful for like quiz maps and all that kind of stuff obviously as we already see the uh, explosive device is a receiver the barriers that we see in a second a lot from is a receiver even the um the spawner is a receiver uh, you can actually use that thing to receive some things you can you know disable it you can uh eliminate the uh the zombies so that's pretty cool and we also have a semi receiver in that category as the trigger and that is the um how's it called <laughs> the capture area so um the capture area can be used for example with the ball in connection so if you oh wait we have to start the game for that Okay, so if you, for example, build some kind of contraption where the ball is going to be put in in that uh, thing, you can see that the second the ball gets uh, put in the uh, objective uh, object uh, capture area, the ball will respawn on on that trigger, which can be used as a loop or you know you can create some very cool stuff with it. And that is basically all you need to know about the receivers and triggers. And I think we should go over the cool stuff now. Okay, moving on to the more advanced stuff, and uh, as a disclaimer, I use terms out of uh, computer science or electronics, you could say, um, but I just use them to describe this. It's very easier if I use the terms so I can actually explain them on the real life example, uh, but they not really represent uh, what what is in real life or what is in computer science. Um, also, this is kind of close to Minecraft and people can relate to that. So I thought it's an easy way. So don't overthink that. Uh, I'm not explaining exactly what a NOT gate is or what, what a OR gate is or whatever. Uh, just, you know, it's easier to understand. Okay. Okay, starting off with a NOT gate and for the NOT gate, it's super simple. We need to have an input and an output. And if the input is on, then the output is off. If the output is on, then the input is off. So uh, in this example, you can see that we have uh, a blue light, or we had a blue light here. I stepped on it, and now it turns off, and we can see that the output is on. And if I step on the output, then uh, the input is going to turn on. So this is obviously very helpful. And basically, all you need to do, you see that on the screen right now, what you need to set up. Uh, but all you need to do is basically just uh, make sure that if you step on one um, on one trigger that this trigger is going to disable that, uh, itself and going to turn on the other trigger. And obviously in the other trigger, you do the same thing. So very simple, very effective, and you can use that for a lot of stuff. Okay, so the next one is the OR gate. And keep in mind that this is not exactly the replica of the realized version because it does not work in Fortnite like this. Um, uh, for example, Minecraft is a lot closer to real life, uh, you know, uh, logic gates than uh, uh, Fortnite is but uh, basically what we need is at least two inputs and an output and um, so what uh, this OR gate can do is basically it doesn't matter where we step on uh, these triggers or if we step on both at the same time we will always get something in the output and um, the only time we do not get any uh, the only time we do not get anything is if we do not send out anything and that's very obvious so if I step on B, you can see that I have an output, which is that the barrier is going to be disabled. If I step on A, you can see that it is going to be enabled. If I step on A again, uh, this barrier is going to be disabled. And it really shows that it really doesn't matter where you go or where you step on first, uh, you will always have an input, an output on the uh, barrier. You could also step on both, but I cannot do that, obviously. Uh, and how this works is basically you want to connect a music sequencer to uh, a, um, a trigger to a music sequencer and that music sequencer then sends a signal to the um, to the middle one, which is the converter in that fact. Because if you step on both, you obviously need something that converts the two signals into one. So, uh, and then we also need this little contraption here, which I'm not going over how this basically works, but Fortnite is kind of different because you don't have uh, an on off switch, you have like enable and disable, which needs two channels, for example. So you always need two signals or two channels for enabling and dis disabling something. And this little contraption here is kind of doing that. So I will show you that on the screen right now, uh, but it, that is basically nothing that has to do with uh, the whole thing. Okay, moving on to the end gate. And this one is pretty cool because this one basically requires you to activate both triggers at the same time. If you activate one, um, then nothing will happen to the output. If you activate none, obviously, then also nothing will happen to the output. And how this basically works is that the uh, air vent is going to shoot up the baller through uh, this 
contraption and going to land on the trigger, which is going to activate another trigger, which then uh, disables this barrier. But this only works if you step on both triggers at the same time. So as you can see, if I go on B, for example, then just the barrier is going to be disabled. If I step on A, the ball is going to go up, but the barrier is then uh, again enabled. So now if I step on both of them, you can see what is going to happen. So as you can see uh, that uh, the ball is going to get put up, the barrier is going to be disabled and the uh, bumper is going to be triggered and the barrier is down, which is pretty cool. So that is how you can create um, an end gate or uh, to trigger whatever. Okay, moving on to the model stable circuit. And this one is cool because you can create a very short impulse of something. Um, you obviously do not need to make it very short because Fortnite is kind of uh, cool with that because you can actually set up the music sequence or the sequence of that to something higher or lower and obviously depending on how you set it you can make that impulse longer or shorter and uh, This is super simple and how you basically create that by uh, placing obviously a trigger which is going to trigger um, a Music sequencer and that music sequencer is going to loop through a little, you know uh, You know chain you could say yeah, a chain and what the first trigger is doing, it's basically enabling the um, barrier and the second one is disabling the barrier. And obviously, if you jump on here, you will have the short impulse, which is pretty cool. Okay, so moving on to the next one, we have the one trigger toggle switch. And this is definitely not a term out of computer science. If you have a better term, then tell me. I just made that up, so I don't know. Uh, and what this is basically doing is solving a problem that we have in Fortnite currently because we do not have an on and off switch. Uh, we can use this little contraption because if I step on that trigger, you can see we have the barrier turned on. And if I step on it again, uh, it's going to be turned off. And um, that is basically using the same uh, little chain here as the OR gate uh, was using. And this is pretty cool. Um, obviously, I show you guys on the screen how this is working. It's a little bit complicated, but uh, if you get you know the hang of it, it's actually pretty cool. And it's very useful for a lot of stuff uh, because since we do not have an on and off switch, um, that is actually pretty cool. Moving on to the next one, we have the clock or a loop, you could say. And this one is pretty self-explanatory. If I step on that trigger, basically these two, oh, and also that thing is going to explode, I don't know why. Uh, but basically, uh, all this is doing is looping through some triggers and obviously they're going to loop and uh, you have some pretty cool uh, looping effect. And this is very simple in Fortnite because the uh, music sequencers are coming with a, a function which is called looping. So you can just turn that on and you can even, I think, turn that to a specific number or infinite. So uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. And it's obviously looping to the triggers and yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully I could help you guys with something. And um, don't forget to follow me on something. Maybe Twitter. Uh, at Richie Tunes. At basically everything. So uh, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a like if you liked it. Leave two dislikes if you disliked it. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.